want to be a governess, governess in America. In America, it's better, I am told. This weekend, the British Titanic Society will be back in Southampton, holding an event across the weekend to mark the 111th anniversary of the ship's sinking. It's obviously particularly special and poignant in Southampton, not just as the home of Titanic, but with over 500 households from across the city losing a family member in the tragedy. Jessica Sweetingham is from the British Titanic Society. Morning, Jessica. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very good. It's um, a a quite prominent event, this, isn't it? Because it's not just held uh, in the UK. Over the years, it's been held all over the world, I think, hasn't it? Absolutely. What we like to do is offer our members a chance to actually visit very poignant places around the world to the Titanic story. So, for example, last year we were in Cove in Ireland, formerly Queenstown, which was the last port of call before the Titanic sank, um, which was a spectacular weekend. And um, we're really excited to bring it back home to Southampton this year as our spiritual home, like you said. The Royal Grand Harbour Hotel, which is not at all far away, actually, from where Titanic set sail uh, in the Grand Harbour, is the venue for the convention. It takes place over three days. What kind of things go on, Jessica? Lots of very exciting things. <laughs> so we have lectures around maritime history and around Titanic, and we have exhibition stalls and exclusive merchandise. But most importantly, we're encouraging members to immerse themselves, obviously, in the local Southampton culture and ties to the Titanic story. So we have the Titanic walking trail available to the delegates um, to obviously go and see the various memorials dotted around the city. We have a very, very special trip on the Saturday, um, which I can reveal now, <laughs> um, and we actually going on the Watercrest steam line, which was the original line that passengers took from Waterloo oh, on wow. that boat train down which is incredible. We're going to be seeing the landscape they would have seen. We can kind of get a feel of how they would have felt in that anticipation taking that train ride. So that is a very, very special trip exclusively to our Southampton convention this year. And um, going by, I mean, uh, without naming any names, there's a few pubs in Southampton that claim to be one of the ones where the crew and indeed the passengers may have drunk before they uh, boarded the <laughs> ship. But, but there are, must be genuine ones as well around the Oxford Street area uh, who, who uh, lay that claim. And certainly, even if not, a part Part of the the legend almost of Titanic, and they certainly display it very prominently. So I'm imagining that they'll do quite well out of the weekend as well, Jessica. Oh, absolutely. We very much encourage you visiting those. And, and just like I said, immersing yourself in the story of Southampton, it's it's drenched in the history um, and there's a chance to really get involved with the community. Uh, and likewise, you know, we, we want to encourage the, the, the people of Southampton to to kind of get involved over the weekend. We have an official opening on Friday at two o'clock being opened by the Mayor of Southampton and the special guests. So we encourage, you know, if the sun is shining, do pop along to the hotel and come and, come and introduce yourselves and have a little bit of a chat with us. And who are the members of the British? Titanic Society. I'm imagining anyone with a sort of interest in uh, history and recent history, but do you have people with uh, connections to the voyage itself? We absolutely do. We're really, really lucky that we do have a lot of um, families that either, you know, have survivors on board or certainly descendants that they lost. Um, So we do have those as part of our community, as well as historians, as well as Titanic authors. And and like you said, anyone with a passionate interest in the Titanic story or maritime history as as a whole. Um, So it's it's very, very exciting that we have this, this mixture of people that can come together once a year, especially in Southampton, share their stories uh, and, and immerse themselves in that kinship that they've created. The last time you were in Southampton was 2019, pre-COVID, which I'm sure messed up the schedule immensely like it did for uh, most things. <laughs> I'm looking at a photo from uh, your uh, visit. I think it's outside Sea City Museum in Southampton. There are some very accurate costumes for what the ladies in first class may have been wearing on board a Titanic. They look pretty authentic, Jessica. People have put some work into those for the convention. Absolutely. Um, we have obviously two two sort of um, Titanic enthusiasts sort of within our delegate rounds. Some obviously are inspired by the films, um, you know, Night to Remember or, or, you know, James Cameron's 97 film. So we'll kind of inspire their costumes around what Rose would have worn on board or um, Molly Brown. Um, and others obviously go for more traditional period costume as well. So it is kind of a chance to to embrace that, that era as well. And, and it's lovely. And we were fortunate enough to have an animation team who professionally dressed like that, which is fantastic. Um, so no, there is there is an absolute chance to really, like I said, immerse yourself in the story, but also the era and the fashion. And will you be seeing the show because it's on at the Mayflower Titanic, the musical uh, this week? I, co- I don't know if that's coincidentally or not for the uh, anniversary. I'm very excited because I'm hoping to get along this evening. I'm travelling down to Southampton today (laughs) and there is an evening performance. So 